Let's see. <clears throat> Greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hulk Bowden and as usual we're uh, happy to bring you the word of the Lord and the things that uh, he wants to use us to say this morning. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the 17th chapter of the book of Luke. And we're going to start reading at verse 7. So the 17th chapter of the book of Luke. And uh, we'll start reading at verse 7. It reads, But which of you, having a servant, plowing of, or feeding cattle, will say unto him, By and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet? And will not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, and serve me till I have eaten and drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not, in other words, I think not. So likewise, when ye shall have done all the things, those things which are commanded of you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Right here, <clears throat> the Lord is establishing uh, what our attitudes should be concerning serving him many times we as believers uh, we get lifted up uh, for one because we maybe we think that uh, first of all that there's not much for us to do but of course there's a lot for us to do but when we think very lowly uh, concerning our duty it causes us to perform that way as well uh, let's say for instance you may have a child or you may have children or someone, you know, you may know someone that has children and they may be in school and a lot of children don't think above a certain level and so they perform the way that they think. In other words, uh, you can have a student that may have trouble in science or math or reading or something like that, English and they could be thinking you know what i just want to pass this class because i'm having trouble with it i'll be okay with a c and so they make a c and they're rejoicing because at least i've passed the class but the fact of the matter is our mindset should never as you know of course as students the mindset should never be well i just want to pass the class because if that's your mindset that's pretty much all you're going to do is just pass and, and you don't want to have a mindset of just getting by. And many people, even in their Christian walk, they have that same mindset. I just want to do enough to get by. And so when they think that they're doing enough to get by, they may pat themselves on the back and think the Lord is fine with what it is that they're doing. But that's not, of course, that's not God's will. You see, you are doing what, what you're commanded to do. And he was saying, when you've done everything that you've been commanded to do, don't pat yourself on the back and think, yeah, I'm doing something. He says, your attitude should be, I'm an unprofitable servant. In other words, when you've done what you've been commanded to do, you, be, you should be looking to God about what else he wants you to do. You see that? Uh, when, you've, when you've done. And, and so here's the thing. This is really talking about our Christian growth. Many of us we know what sins we've dealt with in the past. We know what sins were strongholds in our lives. And we may think when we first start off on our journey, you know what, I, if I can just stop doing this, or if I can just get a, get a hold of my mouth, I'll be doing okay. I'll be doing all right. But yeah, after, and after God have helped you in that particular area, then what? Now he got to show you some things that were hidden on the inside of you that you had no idea was there. You see that? And so we're talking about growth and where our mindset should be in the Lord concerning growth. Don't think because you've jumped a couple of hurdles and you managed to clear those hurdles that the race is over. It's still some other things there that God need to work out. And so don't pat yourself on the back because you've conquered the idea of being a submissive wife or you've conquered the idea of being a loving husband, you need to go above and beyond, in other words, the call of duty. You see that? Uh, I've learned 
when I was working in the secular world, you know, they had what they call employee of the month and then employee of the year. These people weren't employees of the month and employee of the year because uh, they were just doing their job good. They had to go above and beyond what they were hired to do. You see that? And God expects his people to go above and beyond, not beyond his will. We're not talking about that, getting outside of his will, trying to do other stuff that God didn't call you to do. But you should always, as a servant of the Lord, be looking for things that God have called you to do. And, and not only that, but be looking for ways to grow and look for God in everything so that he can teach you. You know, and I believe that God teaches us using nature. He teaches us, he uses different situations to teach us. And if we're only looking for God to come one way, which is through the mouth of some preacher, then we'll miss him sometimes. And so that is where our growth takes place, is when we're looking for God. And don't think because you've grown to a certain point. In other words, now this is what this is talking about. Don't think because you've grown to a certain point that that's the end of it. Good for you that you go to church on a weekly basis. Good for you that you allow the Lord to tame your tongue. Good for you that you've allowed the Lord to help you to be a submissive wife or a loving husband to your uh, to your to your wife. But it goes beyond that. Are you thinking about those thoughts that always come to you? that you are tempted to act on that's not of God? You see that? Are you thinking about those people that you offended in the way and that you need to go apologize to? You see that? Are you thinking about all of those things that you've done in the past that were deeply rooted in you, but because you haven't done them lately, you know, uh, that maybe you're thinking they still not, that still that you conquered it. Are you thinking about those things? Are you thinking about the work that God has to get out of you? Are you thinking about the things that you've done in the past that's still in, in you to do, but through your own will, you've tried to stay those things off? In other words, you have to allow God to finish what he's started in you. Don't think, well, I've conquered this, so now... I'm doing good in the Lord. First of all, you have to realize that uh, your right standing with God has nothing to do with your performance. That's first and foremost. But you also have to understand that just because your right standing doesn't have anything to do with your performance, God still expects for you to do what he's called you to do. You see that? Let's go real quick, just real briefly, to the 12th chapter of the book of Romans. to read verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see that? So Paul here says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You see that? holy and acceptable. Now, it's talking about the life that we're supposed to live. Our bodies are supposed to be yielded to the Holy Spirit for service. We're supposed to live holy lives unto the Lord. And Paul says that's our reasonable service. Now, when you have preachers telling the folks that they can't be perfect, you don't even think on the level of having a reasonable service. Paul said that's reasonable. And when you're talking about reasonable, you're thinking about fairness. That's your fair service. God's not asking you to do something that's impossible. You see that? That's reasonable. If I told a three-year-old to go drive to the store and get me something to eat, that's not reasonable because he's not able to do that. His mind hasn't grasped that idea of driving yet. But if I tell a 50-year-old with a driver's license that's been driving for 30 years, that's reasonable. That's obtainable. And I expect them to get back to the house without wrecking. You see that? And so the Lord is telling us when we are in Him, our reasonable service is living holy and offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. 
Now, when you talk about living, why did he put living sacrifice? Why didn't he just say sacrifice? Because when you're a living sacrifice, it means that you're not living in sin. A dead sacrifice is one that's sinful because sin brings death. You see that? And so the Lord is telling us to live a sinless life. That's our reasonable service. And until we get to that point, we have no reason to pat ourselves on the back about anything. You see that? And so God is telling us he has a, a level that he wants us to achieve. And he don't want us to just be average. In other words, say, well, that's a hard area to deal with, so I'll just be glad to make a C in it. We better think above, just like the word says, unless our righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees, we will in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. We better, our righteousness better surpass theirs. And, and the Lord meant that when he said it. So my prayer is, is that we will allow God to, to retrain our thoughts. We will allow God to renew our minds so that we can see what he expects of us and we'll be able to perform the thing that he expects of us. Amen. We thank you all for joining us today. Of course, we pray that something was said that has been a blessing to you. And we pray that you will continue to tune in to this broadcast. Have a blessed day.